What will define the aerospace industry in 2026? Many will point to Starship refilling. Long viewed as the breakthrough needed for true deep space travel, this mission is finally approaching reality. SpaceX has begun outlining how the operation will unfold, along with the first targeted timeline for execution next year. So when is this milestone expected to happen, and what must SpaceX complete before it arrives? Let's dive into the details on today's episode of Great SpaceX. Next year, as Starship develops and accelerates, SpaceX appears ready to attempt something that once seemed impossible. One of the most ambitious goals on the horizon is orbital refilling, a capability widely regarded as the final key required to open the door to true deep space missions. Following the success of the last two V2 flights, the rapid emergence of the V3 generation and the increasingly defined timeline for the lunar landing program, it is clear that SpaceX must demonstrate refilling next year. In its update on the Starship HLS, SpaceX emphasized that the next major milestones include a long-duration flight test and the in-space propellant transfer test. Both of these efforts are essential for the moon missions. So when exactly will this happen? In a recent update, SpaceX indicated a target of June 2026 for a full ship-to-ship -ship refilling test in orbit. This is the first time the company has publicly identified a specific month. Until now, announcements only mentioned the year 2026 or simply said the test would take place sometime within that year. Stating a clear target month shows a very firm intention. It's not yet known whether this June milestone refers to the long-duration mission or the full refilling demo, but either way, the moment will be significant. This refilling timeline has major implications for both the months leading up to the test and the period that follows. Before the refilling attempt, SpaceX must complete a series of crucial flight objectives. Achieving orbit, deploying a real payload, and demonstrating two-stage landing operations all need to occur between January and May. In addition, the first V3 mission must validate all upgrades to the new generation design. This creates a scenario where at least four major flights may be required in the first half of the year, although this number could increase if issues arise or decrease if multiple objectives are combined into a single flight. Either way, the opening months of the year are shaping up to be incredibly active for Starship. A launch almost every month is a real possibility. This would match or exceed the pace set in late 2024 during the period of Flight 5 to 6. Only when these essential milestones are completed can SpaceX fully shift its attention to building the operational refilling system. The June refilling target also heavily influences the schedule afterward. In the same update, SpaceX outlined goals for the moon missions, including the uncrewed landing demonstration in June of 2027 and the crewed landing in September of 2028. While some expected these missions to occur earlier, the new timeline gives SpaceX roughly one full year between the first refilling demonstration and the uncrewed landing mission. That year will be absolutely necessary. The operational lunar missions will require more than 10 tanker flights to fully fuel the lander in orbit. This is the minimum number. If any flight has an issue, SpaceX needs margin to repeat the mission. Furthermore, Starship vehicles used for refilling will not be reused once they deliver propellant, which means production must keep pace with high demand. SpaceX must build, test, and launch a steady stream of tankers, all while improving reliability. Given these enormous requirements, it becomes clear why the refilling test must take place early in the year. Conducting it in June allows SpaceX to move directly into full system construction afterward while still maintaining schedule flexibility. So, are you ready for this historic moment? If you're excited, let me know with a ready in the comment section down below. Don't forget to like the video and subscribe to our channel to stay up to date on SpaceX's ongoing development journey. Now, let us take a closer look at how SpaceX will prepare for the major mission ahead. To begin, we should look at the milestones SpaceX has already achieved. These accomplishments were highlighted in the company's recent Human Landing System update and provide a clear foundation for what comes next. For the Starship HLS program, SpaceX confirmed progress on two key elements. The first is the activation of the hardware in the loop testbed for the propellant transfer flight test. This testbed uses flight representative hardware to simulate the conditions and behavior expected during the real in space propellant transfer mission. In simpler terms, SpaceX is already testing refilling operations on the ground with hardware that closely mirrors what will actually fly. The second completed milestone is the demonstration of the depot power module. This module tests the prototype electrical power generation and distribution systems 
that will be used on the Propellant Depot variant of Starship. Its completion suggests that SpaceX is preparing for both potential approaches to refilling, one being direct ship-to-ship -ship transfer and the other a dedicated orbital depot that may eventually store propellant for multiple missions. Before reaching the HLS phase, SpaceX also needs to prepare the standard Starship system. On that front, major steps have been completed. SpaceX has finished the docking port on the V3 generation, enabling these vehicles to act as Starship tankers during refilling missions. The company also confirmed that Starship will rely on the Dragon Eye navigation system, which has proven itself through years of use on the Dragon spacecraft. This gives Starship a reliable and mature system for rendezvous and docking, which are essential for refilling operations. With these foundations established, the next phase of preparation becomes even more important. First, SpaceX will significantly increase production of both Starship and the HLS variant. Starship must be available in large numbers to support the busy flight schedule expected next year, along with the many tanker missions required afterward. This is where the Star Factory and the new stacking base will need to operate at full capacity. At the same time, test and launch infrastructure must advance rapidly. SpaceX will need fully upgraded pads, flame trenches, cryogenic systems, and engine testing capability to handle the high flight cadence targeted for the coming year. These systems are essential to maintain steady progress toward the refilling demonstration. If all goes well, early next year may also mark the public debut of the first full HLS prototype. Although the uncrewed and crewed landing missions have shifted to 2027 and 2028, releasing the HLS vehicle early will build confidence, allow more thorough testing, and let NASA evaluate the hardware ahead of time. From that point forward, SpaceX must align its work carefully with the 2026 objectives. The company will need every milestone to land on schedule so that the refilling mission can proceed without delay. For the official HLS operations, preparation becomes even more demanding. SpaceX will need to conduct both a long-duration flight test and the full in-space propellant transfer mission. These two tests aim to gather detailed data on propulsion performance, thermal behavior, long-term cryogenic storage, and propellant boil-off. Long-duration storage of cryogenic fuel is extremely difficult, and propellant transfer in microgravity is equally challenging. Both require precise engineering, careful simulations, and extensive real-world testing. In short, the next phase is all about readiness. SpaceX has built the foundation, secured the hardware, and proven the essential systems. Now, the company must scale production and complete new infrastructure and prepare for the most complex orbital operations in spaceflight history. Obviously, there are enormous expectations surrounding orbital refilling because its importance is impossible to overstate. When people think about transferring fuel in space, many immediately question whether it can be truly done. No one has ever attempted this type of operation before, and its complexity stems from an entire chain of demanding requirements. SpaceX will need to place two massive vehicles into orbit within a specific window of time, guide them across hundreds of kilometers to rendezvous, align them with absolute precision, and then connect them to safely transfer fuel. Every step must be executed with a level of accuracy and flexibility that leaves no room for error. Beyond the vehicles themselves, even storing and managing fuel in the vacuum of space presents its own set of challenges. All of this skepticism is heightened by the fact that Starship has not yet reached orbit. In the long term, the mission becomes even more demanding because it requires a large number of ready prototypes. The launch pads must operate reliably and the infrastructure must support rapid and consistent flight activity. Everything needs to be in place for a surge of launches within short periods of time. If SpaceX can push through these obstacles and succeed, it will mark a defining moment in the history of spaceflight. It will once again demonstrate SpaceX's ability to transform impossibilities into realities. The importance of orbital refilling extends far beyond the engineering challenge. It is central to Starship's purpose. SpaceX is not just building a rocket, they are building a system designed to carry unprecedented amounts of cargo and people to the moon, Mars, and beyond. Starship needs enormous quantities of fuel to reach those destinations, yet it burns the majority of its propellant on the climb through Earth's atmosphere. Refilling in orbit solves that problem. As SpaceX stated, on-orbit refilling enables Starship to complete the Artemis lunar mission architecture and carry up to 100 tons directly to the lunar surface, providing the capability to transport rovers, habitats, and other payloads needed to establish a permanent and sustainable presence on the moon. The logic extends naturally to Mars, where the journey is much longer and even more demanding. Whenever doubts rise, SpaceX has a history of breaking through them. They did it when they landed boosters on drone ships, they did it when they built the Mechazilla Tower to catch returning vehicles. 
both ideas were once dismissed as unrealistic. Now the company faces a challenge of even greater scale, one that unfolds not on the ground but high above Earth. If they succeed, they will establish a lead that other companies may struggle to match. And compared with next year's upcoming demonstrations, including New Glenn's first reuse attempt, Neutron's debut flight, or the activities of new space stations, it is orbital refilling that is likely to capture the world's imagination the most, both for its extraordinary potential and for the spectacle it promises to deliver. We are now approaching the moment when everything begins to take shape. Starting around the middle of next year, specifically in June, we will finally witness the first real steps towards SpaceX's long-anticipated orbital refilling system. Space enthusiasts have been waiting for this capability for years, and now that SpaceX has offered a clear timeline, the excitement is beginning to build. We can prepare ourselves for a dramatic milestone, although it is impossible to predict how exactly any of us will react when it actually happens. Even with that anticipation, it's important to remember that SpaceX must still overcome a long list of challenges before reaching this point. There are critical goals that must be met for Starship, for the refilling architecture, and for the upcoming moon missions. Every step requires preparation, testing, and coordination across an enormous and rapidly evolving system. Next year will also bring intense competition. Blue Origin has completed its second New Glenn mission and is planning ambitious advances. Rocket Lab is preparing to enter the heavy lift arena with its new vehicle Neutron. Companies that have been quiet or slow, such as ULA and Europe's Ariane Space, are also preparing to push forward with renewed urgency. And of course, China continues to develop its own versions of these technologies. SpaceX will need to move faster than ever in order to maintain its lead. Even so, 2026 is shaping up to be an extremely promising year. With so many developments across the industry, one moment stands out above the rest. June June 2026 is expected to mark the beginning of orbital refilling demonstrations, a capability that could redefine what humans can accomplish in space. The question now is, are you ready for it? In any case, folks, this has been Kevin with Great SpaceX. Don't forget to like the video and subscribe if you haven't already to stay up to date with yours truly on the latest milestones in SpaceX's journey. Thank you so much for watching, and always remember, curiosity, imagination, and inspiration will follow you so long as you keep looking up.